Police officers in Fraser are being hailed as heroes this morning after they pulled an elderly woman from a burning vehicle. The incredible rescue all caught on camera. I asked the court to uh, allow him to stand mute and ask the court to enter not guilty plea at this time. All right, Andre, plea of not guilty on behalf of your client. Plus, legal trouble this morning for journalist Charlie LaDuff. What we're learning about his recent arrest and the charges he now faces. And a community pulling the plug on gas powered leaf blowers, where you could face a fine for using the common yard maintenance tool. Working for you. Fox 2 News Live at 11 starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Robin Murdoch. And I'm Ryan Romani. We began our top story breaking news from Melvindale, a bizarre series of events unfolding a crash in an unrelated shooting. Yeah, all this happening earlier this morning on southbound I-75 near Outer Drive. Here's what we know so far. Michigan State Police were on the scene of a crash involving an SUV. That's when a man who had been shot also stopped on the freeway asking for help. Now, troopers called EMS, and right now that man's condition has not been released. The car he was driving had also been shot up and had visible bullet holes in the windshield and in the side. Detroit police say that shooting happened off of the freeway and they are investigating. Now the driver involved in the original crash was not hurt. Stay with Fox 2 News for the very latest updates as they do become available. A news alert now from Detroit's east side. Police on the scene for several hours overnight investigating a double shooting at a home on Lappin Street. That's near Seven Mile in Gratiot. Officers say one male victim died at the scene. The other is hospitalized in critical condition. No word yet on what led up to that shooting or if there are any suspects. Police are asking anyone with information to call the 9th Precinct or Crime Stoppers. A former Detroit police officer will be in court later today to be arraigned on manslaughter charges. Yeah, Ryan, 29-year-old Juwan Brown is accused in the fatal assault of 71-year-old uh, Daryl Vance back in September. The, he was an officer at the time. Brown was responding to a call of a disorderly man at a bowling alley on Woodward. Investigators say Brown got into an altercation with the man, striking him in the face. Now, Vance then fell to the ground, hit his head, and later died from those injuries. The Wayne County prosecutor says the officer's actions are criminal and went beyond what was necessary for the situation. Well, the city of Lansing and its police department facing a massive $100 million lawsuit. Yeah, family wants justice after their loved one was shot and killed by officers. Fox 2's Lauren Edwards has a look at some of that body cam video. Get on the ground now! Bro. Get on the ground! I will shoot you! Get on the ground now! Bro. Get on the ground! We're now 19 days post Stevens killing. 19 days without a father, 19 days without a husband. Now the Romero family and their attorneys at Figer Law have filed a $100 million civil lawsuit against the city of Lansing and three of its officers. We will be putting every effort that this office has, that Figer Law has, into pursuing justice for the family. Harrington says on December 1st, Lansing police were responding to a domestic violence call. When police arrived, the attorneys say they shot and killed Stephen Romero outside his home as he was exiting his vehicle. The only thing that's relevant, the only thing that's relevant for the determination as to whether this was a legal or illegal shoot. The family sat in both of these seats. They were visibly emotional and they chose not to make a comment. But their attorney says one thing that he would like to do and they would also like to do is see the full video of what happened. You saw in the video the police exit the vehicle. You see them with their, uh, their AR-15 uh, machine gun. Then the video goes to this, pictures or stills of what happened. Still frame of the weapon in Romero's pants. This is a still frame of Romero's hand on the weapon. 
Fox 2 reached out to the mayor of Lansing's office and they provided this statement, quote, the Lansing Police Department works every day to protect the public and response to violent situations. This matter is the subject of an ongoing investigation and no details or findings have even been released yet. We will await the report from the Michigan State Police and have no comments about any potential legal actions. Harrington says these cases and investigations can take weeks and months to complete, but his focus for right now is on obtaining the full unedited video. I ask what are they hiding and I, I demand uh, transparency. In Southfield, Lauren Edwards, Fox 2 News. A police officer in Frazier jumps into action when he sees a vehicle engulfed in flames. Officer Cameron Reaper risked his own life to save the elderly woman inside that vehicle that had crashed into a ditch. I arrived on scene. I was the first officer. Um, I observed that the vehicle was on fire. There was uh, flames in like the bed area of the truck, and then the engine compartment was just starting to catch on fire. She appeared confused, wasn't really answering any questions. Um, she was still inside the vehicle, so I opened the door, took her safety belt off, and tried to get her out of the car. She was an old elderly female. Um, it's really unknown if she had a medical issue or if that um, what exactly happened for the original crash. The video is credible. Uh, prior to his time at Fraser PD, Officer Reaper was actually a firefighter and used those skills to rescue that woman. We are told the victim is in the hospital, but her injuries are non life threatening. Well, one of the most recognizable names in Detroit journalism facing serious legal charges this morning. Yeah, former Fox 2 reporter Charlie LaDuff was arrested at his home for domestic abuse. Fox 2's Dave Spencer has the very latest. This is case number 230075PR. This is the People versus Charles LaDuff. A familiar face to longtime viewers of Fox 2 News. Charlie LaDuff was known for his unique storytelling ability, widely considered an advocate for Detroiters. Now, however, accused of a serious crime. I asked the court to uh, allow him to stand mute and asked the court to enter not guilty plea at this time. All right, I'll have to plead of not guilty on behalf of your client. During his arraignment, Ladoff, seen in clothes he was wearing at the time of his arrest, didn't say a word. He is, um, you know, I, I believe a fixture in the community. He's not a flight risk, but, you know, this doesn't make it any less serious. Leaving his attorney to deliver his message on his behalf. The most important thing to, that Charlie wants people to know is that he loves his family. Um, you know, his, his wife, his kid, um, he loves them and, and really wants to keep this as private as possible. Details of the alleged crime will likely come during the next court appearance. The complainant in this matter is his wife of 31 years, um, and I don't know what she has indicated. At his arraignment, his attorney argued for his release from jail. And I understand this is an incident that allegedly occurred in his home, and I, I think that's the real issue of what the court wants to do. Um, I would ask for a, a, a recognizance bond. The judge gave Ladoff a bond on the condition that he doesn't contact his wife, go to his house, or use drugs or alcohol. I know that he has no prior history of failure to appear for any court appearances. Uh, he has one prior from 2007 that was uh, alcohol related. Uh, at this time, I'm going to give him a 5,000 personal bond. Ladoff was recently let go from his job as a columnist for the Detroit News, but still maintains a media presence, hosting a weekly Detroit based podcast. He's expected back in the courtroom on February 13th for a preliminary hearing. You get an opportunity to look at the statements to, and you get an opportunity to, to defend because what happens is, you know, when the when the allegation is made, the general public have a tendency, tendency to assume that is fact. That was Dave Spencer reporting. Leduff is now out of jail, but we are told he is not allowed to go back home. Well, GM's Factory Zero is back open this morning after a fire broke out at the Detroit Hamtramck manufacturing facility yesterday afternoon. According to the reports, the fire at Detroit Hamtramck plant involved some lithium, lithium ion batteries near a shipping dock area. The fire shut down production overnight at the factory that builds the GMC Hummer, all electric pickup and SUV, and the Chevrolet Silverado EV work truck. The heavy fire sent smoke throughout much of the facility. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. Employees returned to the plant this morning. This is
city of Ann Arbor is now telling its residents to find a quieter way to clear their lawns and driveways of leaves. The city council unanimously passed an ordinance to gradually ban gas-powered leaf blowers. According to the Detroit Free Press, the city citing noise pollution and concerns as reasons behind that ban. Now, gas-powered blowers will only be allowed from October to May, and they will be phased out fully in 2028. Violators will face a $100 penalty for the first offense and $250 for each violation after that. 11:10 the time a stunning de decision by one state's Supreme Court removing Donald Trump from the ballot in 2024. We have more on this decision and what it means for the presidential race after the break. But first, Derek Kevra. Ryan, since that snow fell a couple of days ago, we are above freezing for a significant amount of time and significantly above freezing. 36 degrees right now. We get to 42 later today. How about Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? That forecast coming up. Weather-wise, around the United States, things are fairly quiet, but that's going to change over the next couple of days as we see some rain move in on Friday. It's going to be probably more Friday, late afternoon, early evening, and then another chance for it as we get close to Christmas Day. I think Christmas Day could be wet, but not wet in snow, wet and rainy because it's going to be warm. Temperatures climbing to close to 50 degrees. Now, notice up in northern Michigan right now, the radar is showing some snowflakes. I've seen that being picked up on the radar. I have yet to see with our camera network anything actually making it to the ground up there. It's not going to impact us either way, but if you are one of those people that you say it's December 20th and my family tradition is we always go up north to visit our family, you might run into some precipitation. It's not going to happen down here, but what will happen down here is we will eventually see more clouds. There's a chance through Thursday we could see a couple of passing sprinkles, but the bullseye of that rain is the stuff on Friday. So here's 5 p.m. Friday. So more into the evening, we're going to see that rain move in. It's going to be wet then through Friday night. Early Saturday morning, still with those showers that are around. Then Saturday begins to dry out. Sunday begins to dry out, too. Here's one of those live cameras from up north. And again, it looks cloudy. It looks like they've got some snow earlier in the week, which we all did. But now today's the day where we're going to begin to see it melting. That camera, by the way, was right there in Mount Pleasant, 32 degrees. We are at 36. We warm up into the 40s by this afternoon. We should see lower 40s between the hours of 1 o'clock and 4 p.m. Here's the next couple of days. So we'll say low 40s taking us through the end of the week with those showers later on Friday. We'll talk more about your holiday <clears throat> itself in just a little bit. Robin, take it away. We have some breaking news to pass along to you this morning. A news helicopter from TV station WPVI in Philadelphia crashed in New Jersey, killing both the pilot and the videographer. They were the only people on board and were returning from an assignment at the Jersey Shore. The chopper went down in the woods in New Jersey's Burlington County. That location has been making it hard for first responders to access the site. It is unclear right now what caused the helicopter to crash. That is just horrible news, mm -hmm. and my goodness, heartbreaking. Un uh, heartbreaking. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump is promising to appeal after the Colorado State Supreme Court boots him from the ballot. Yeah, the court declared Trump ineligible to run for the White House under the U.S. Constitution's insurrection clause. A similar effort in Michigan earlier this year failed. Here's Fox's Madeline Rivera. In a stunning 4-3 decision, the Colorado Supreme Court kicked former President Trump off the state's presidential primary ballot. The court says because of his actions on January 6, Trump is disqualified from holding the office of president under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. It bars anyone who has previously taken an oath to support the Constitution from holding public office if they have engaged in insurrection or rebellion. To reach this decision, the court had to decide that, one, the uh, January 6 Capitol riot was in fact an insurrection and that two Trump engaged in insurrection uh, on January 6th and third that it actually applies to the president. This is the first time that section 3 of the 14th amendment has been used to keep a presidential candidate off the ballot. A conclusion the court insists it did not reach lightly. It marks a reversal from a district judge's finding last month that the provision did not apply to the presidency. I think we're going to see very quickly the argument about whether this court was politicized. There are at least a dozen states where Trump disqualification lawsuits are pending. Colorado's ruling injecting more uncertainty in an already unpredictable race for the White House. Trump has unfinished business, but there's nothing saying that he's going to finish what he started anyways. Trump's campaign blasting the decision as part of a scheme to interfere in an election on behalf of President Biden. Then we're going to crush crooked Joe Biden next November. 
An appeal to the Supreme Court is almost sure to happen, but Colorado officials say the issue must be settled by January 5th, the deadline for the state to print its presidential primary ballots. In Washington, Mather Avera, Fox 2 News. Speaking in Iowa last night, former President Donald Trump also doubled down on recent comments about the impact of immigrants coming into the U.S. They're ruining our country. And it's true. They're destroying the blood of our country. That's what they're doing. They're destroying our country. They don't like it when I said that. And I never read Mein Kampf. They said, oh, Hitler said that in a much different way. Now, critics have said Trump's choice of words has echoes of white extremism. He made similar comments compared to those once made by Hitler during a speech on Saturday. Now, a number of Senate Republicans, including Mitch McConnell, have criticized similar remarks from Mr. Trump in recent days. The holiday season, holiday travel season rather, is already ramping up at airports all across the country, right? You're very familiar with the DTW, right? <laughs> and this year could be one for the record books. AAA says 115 million Americans will travel more than 50 miles from home. 7 million, more than 7 million, will be flying. The TSA says there are things travelers can do to help make sure that those lines don't get bogged down. It will be lines, it will be busy, and my suggestion to you is use that time in the queue for your, to your advantage. Uh, begin to empty your pockets. The TSA says the busiest travel days will be this Thursday and Friday, and also in the days after Christmas.